Hi, we are 60 Minutes in Berlin. I'm Moran Magal, and today I'm really honored to interview Arian, Anthony Lucasen, and I am a big fan, I have to say, really. I'm honored, Moran. Well, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, really. I am. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I was cool. really excited. When That's I a good start of the interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have a new album. I have, out. I do. Yeah. Um, the Sorcerer? The Source, yeah. The Source, yeah, album. yeah. The sorcerer. See, that's, that's Opeth. That's o well. Opeth is great you too. See you see how know. excited I am. <laughs> and the source. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. Um, relative to my question. Like yeah. the source of, of what? Exactly? Source of mankind, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm explaining where we come from. So it's a big concept. But the source also refers to um, the source of Arion. Basically, mm -hmm. I see it as the start of Arion. And the source also refers to water. You know, which is the origin of life. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of references to the source. The source is also um, the drug liquid eternity. It's getting too complicated. The drug liquid eternity, which is introduced in one of my earlier Arion albums. Yeah. So, but basically, let's go with the source of mankind. It's the easiest. And you're like, you're a producer, you are a singer songwriter, you're a multi instrumentalist, but you're like, yeah. really like this mastermind of everything you yeah. are writing the narratives of of the story of your album it is like a concept album you're mm -hmm. collaborating with um really the top singers yes. uh, in the world yes. how, how did you get to that how, how did you start actually uh, i started uh, like everyone just playing in a little band mm -hmm. and uh, no i just started learning to play the guitar no I, even earlier i started in a playback band the i was too lazy was your, your first instrument no, uh, yeah yeah but but I started singing in a playback band, but it was fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was too, too lazy to learn how to play an instrument. Uh -huh. I was a singer, I was Alice Cooper and David Bowie, you know, I was in the glam rock So days. you were like an actor? I was an actor uh -huh. and I was playing at schools. Yeah. And I was just like uh, putting on my mother's wig and jewelry. And uh, yeah. I don't do that anymore, by the way. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. Maybe in the next album. <laughs> yeah. uh, who knows? <laughs> so yeah, that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And then I, we played a lot of schools. We were really popular. We were called the Flying Potatoes, believe it or not. Well, with a name like that, I can imagine. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was 13 at the time. And then I was 15. We played at the school. And the older pupils came to me. And they said, listen to this. And they played me Deep Purple. And I heard Richie Blackmore play, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that's what I want. But so that's then when you started to take that's when I started to learn the guitar. Mm -hmm. I never had lessons. all taught myself. And, and that's when I started playing in bands. So I've been playing in bands. Basically, I was lucky. When I was 18, I joined a professional band. So I never worked an honest day in my life. I got straight so into straight music. So straight to the music. Yes. Straight to the music. Yeah, a band called Bodine. And it was, um, uh, yeah, early 80s, 1980 was the first album. And yeah, I started touring the world straight away. And then I went to a band called Vengeance in 1984 mm -hmm. till 1992. Playing live, touring, the whole rock and roll. So basically, life. you were su in successful. You can say that those bands were like successful uh, in terms of in, um, terms, in of terms of touring. In, of touring. Yeah, yeah, not in terms of earning oh. a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, they were pretty successful. We, we made albums, and we had people coming every. You had a fan base. Basically, we had a fan base. Those, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. It was. Uh, and when did you um, started to think about this um, idea? Because you're like one of these pioneers of metal opera. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've always wanted to do it, but the bands I was in was was in the days of Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and ACDC, you mm -hmm. know. So it was rock and roll and David Lee Roth and you know and having fun on stage and songs about girls and whatever. I mean. Uh, I saw a beautiful blonde and a pretty brunette. Come on, girls, let's get wet. You know, yeah, <laughs> that kind yeah, of yeah. the typical <laughs> 80s glam yeah, rock stuff. Yeah. But it was never my thing. You know, it's I, not, I it was, was not for you. No, no, it was fun to do it on stage. You mm -hmm. know, it was fun. But all I really wanted to do was like to, uh, I was, I was like, it was inspired by uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, in the early 70s yeah, yeah. that's where it all started for mm -hmm. me and the who with tommy and and all these these rock operas and so when i stopped with with all these bands i thought but well, you know let's do something i want 100 percent and everyone will hate it <laughs> really and i'll you just really throw thought, you really yeah yeah will yeah because because i liked prog i liked rock i liked folk Mm -hmm. I like Celtic, I like classical music, electronic music, and I thought I'd throw it all together 
get a lot of friends in there with all different voices, do a big story. And the album was called, my first album was called The Final Experiment. Yeah. And I really thought it was my final experiment. I really thought, let's do this. One time, get it out of the system. Get it out of my system. Yeah. If I ever have kids, you know, this is what daddy really likes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But then to everyone's surprise. It, it was a success. It became a success. Wow, yeah. this yeah. is amazing. Slowly. Not, S slowly? Not, yeah. What do you mean slowly? Like uh, how much time did it take? Well... At first, I, I finished it I, actually in '93, and it took me a year. So this is a boost for everyone who cannot get a record contract. It took me a year to get a record contract. Mm -hmm. All uh, 30 record companies turned Says me no. down. Yeah. yeah, and I kept all the faxes. I, faxes in those days, no computers yet. Mm -hmm. Faxes that told me uh, like, "We love your music and it's great, it's fantastic." But hey, man, we're listening to Nirvana uh -huh. and and Pearl Jam. And, so basically, and it was like too much for them. You think to handle? It was not the right time. Not the right it time. It was stupid to do that. No mm -hmm. one else was doing it. But I wanted to do it anyway, you know, it was a, if it's the last thing I did, so we released it and slowly it was like 5,000, 10,000 sold, 20,000 sold, what, entering charts and yeah. 30,000, what is going to 40,000, Japan releases it, you know, whoa, 20,000 in Japan. That's amazing. And then feeling. it was, and then the record company was, we want another one. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Did it put uh, stress on you that um, when the record company comes and says, okay, now we want another one? I love stress. You love stress. I love stress, mm -hmm. yeah. I need that pressure. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for bands who are in the studio for years and they have no idea no, if, no if anyone line. will even hear it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That, that must be awful. But I, for me, I know loads of people will hear it and that pushes me on. That pushes me like, damn it, man, I gotta deliver, you know? I gotta yeah, yeah. make them happy. I got a deadline. Yeah, like some kind of I deadline. love deadlines. Yeah. I always keep that I always stick to deadlines because mm -hmm. you know record companies have a, a knack of saying the deadline is this and they say a month before because they know artists is always late. Yeah. And I tell them I, you know I'm always ready in time so tell me the real deadline. Yeah. <laughs> and those amazing people you came to collaborate uh, with your album you collaborated like with uh, James Lambrie from Dream Theater mm. and Bruce Dickinson from mm. Iron Maiden. Like mm. I was really curious to ask how was it to, to collaborate with Bruce Dickinson for example it's a dream come true yeah. you know? as a kid you know I, I, I was already a fan of Samson the first band he was yeah. in and when I heard he was going to join Iron Maiden I was like okay that's going to be the album <laughs> Number of the Beast came out yeah. you know I bought it I know every line you know yeah. I left alone my mind you know and and then you saw them live and you saw this crazy guy running on stage and if you would have told me then you know that guy is going to be in your studio You never believed singing it. Your, no, you never way. believed it. I would have said, yeah. And how did you start to produce, basically? Like, um, like to be a producer, this is a lot of uh, responsibility. You have, yeah. to, you have to know a lot. You play yeah. also uh, the synthesizers. Yeah, you play right, the yeah, keyboards, yeah, yeah. and um, you got to have a lot of knowledge with the program. So you it's, were it's uh, baby steps. Yeah, it's uh -huh. my whole career has been baby steps, which I like. It was never like I'm a big hero at 20 and. Uh, Am I flapping too much? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no it's I can do it too. <laughs> yeah, we flap, to, <laughs> flap together. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was never, uh, and I'm glad about that, that I was never a huge success once and then it's all it down. Came step it, by step. it was step by step. And I, I can't really play keyboards, you know. I'm sure you're a better piano player than me. I don't I know. Am. You have I'm to tell sure. me. I don't know. No, <laughs> I can just play, I can grab chords, I know where A minor is, that's it. So multi-instrumentalist is too too big an honor for me because mm -hmm. I really I I play everything a little bit, but my strength is I see the big picture. Yeah, I yeah. know this singer is gonna sound cool yeah. on this point uh, stuff, and I know this I need this guitar player for this. That's I wanted to ooh, yeah. almost drop all my questions. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about this because yeah. do you like um, um, modify your music? For example, you have an idea of a singer. Let's say you want to collaborate. Uh, let's say okay I, i've mentioned his name Jam james lambrie yeah, yeah. so you like you modify the music to his voice or no you like, no or other no? way around other way yeah, around, other way around. Mm -hmm. i start with the music then i let the music inspire me to come up with story so i have no story yet. yeah and once i've got the the music and the story then i think like okay which fingers singers fit the story and the music it's yeah. important yeah. if i do a sci-fi concept there's going to be singers like oh, i don't like sci-fi or i don't like concept or whatever so yeah i i, I choose the singers and then i put the singers on the music yeah and the the melody lines and the and the lyrics i write for that particular singer uh -huh. so even the characters like 
James Lebrie is the historian yeah. in, in the new one. Yeah. So he's got that warm, deep, emotive voice, you know, that, that, and I think he's great to start a song and to tell the story. So, so it wasn't like I have a historian in my story. Yeah. It was like I have James Lebrie, so I'm going to write a historian into the story. And do you write the story um, together with the music, separately? <laughs> Do you have like ideas, let's say it happened to you, let's say 10 years ago, you had some idea, you put it away? No, no, no. No, no. it's not like this for no, you. I, I, no, I, if, if I have an idea, I use it or I throw it away. Mm -hmm. So I never use old ideas. You never use old ideas? No, no, no. Same with music. Mm -hmm. I, when I write music, I write 50 little parts and I choose the 20 best mm -hmm. and the rest erase. Yeah. Crappy. Don't want to hear <laughs> ever hear them again. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the source, yeah, now I said it correctly. Yes. <laughs> um, I've listened to the, to the new album and the first track, I felt it is like um, celebration of death. Am yeah. I correct? I felt this is how I felt. Everybody dies. Everybody I mean, dies and yeah. it, it, it feels like um, really heroic somehow, you know. I felt I know. like I'm going inside this great movie. I, I, like, would, like, I would be that way. Like I a would positive like, death parade. Yeah, I would, be, I would like embrace it. Mm -hmm. If like, I think if like a comet would come, you would see the comet coming, you know. I think 99% of the people would go <laughs> and, <laughs> and hide under thing. I'd be like, yeah, whoa, look at that. Yeah, come on, come on, hit me, you know. <laughs> I would be like that. But you know, this album, even though I said, I felt like it, it deals a lot with death. And yes. yeah, it does a lot. Yeah. But it was a really fun album to listen. I, I yeah. didn't feel it uh, depressed me in no, any no, way. No, 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 no. It's, no. Uh, it's really, it has, it's very well, versatile. It, it um, is, it, it looks at... It's, you know, Monty Python? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, always look on the bright side of yeah, life. I yeah. mean, that's such an inspiration for me. It's yeah. one of my favorite songs ever, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy is hanging on the cross. He's <laughs> crucified, yeah. you know. <laughs> always look on the bright. I mean, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, true. It's brilliant. And I totally, you know, if, if I ever die at my funeral, please play Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Well, let's, let's wait with that a while. <laughs> yeah, because I hope there are so. a few, a lot more albums you would like to hear from Yes. You. So wait with that. I, I, yeah, I, I promise, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> and how are your fans uh, re reacting so far? I've, um, I've read like all the, all the tickets were sold out yeah. for your concert. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. it was like 9,000 tickets in yeah. one day. I mean, thank you guys. It, I really did not expect that. Yeah. I really, really, I, I thought maybe we, we sell out one and maybe we can do a, a second after that. But then, you know, within two hours, those two shows sold out with 6,000 people. And we added a third Holland, one. Yeah, in the Netherlands. In Holland, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And people are coming from all over the world, you know. Of course. Australia, Argentina, uh, everywhere. And can you tell uh, me, us, a little bit about uh, the singers collaborating with you on this album? And uh, why did you choose them, maybe, a little bit? Uh, well, like I said, I, 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 uh, I, I, have, I didn't say that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, have, uh, I always start, I have a wish list of, like, believe it or not, like 200 singers. Okay. A lot of them are... Uh, I, I can never reach them. They're unreachable. There are the Paul McCartney's and David Gilmour's and Robert Plant's and, mm -hmm. and people I really can't reach, like Dio. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask if, if you could hard. bring back to life somebody from the dead who would be uh, Ronnie, Ronnie, yeah, yeah, Ronnie James Dio, yeah. and, and or John Lennon mm -hmm. going back a bit more, even yeah. And then yeah, and then I from these singers I pick the singers that I think would fit the album, and I just contact them. Uh, they don't always work out. Sometimes they don't react. Sometimes they don't have time. Yeah. And this time I managed to get the best in the world, you know. And, uh, and I also feel, you know, because today, like, um, the media, social media and the world, everything is becoming so, uh, so quick and everything is so fast. People mm. sometimes don't have the time to lis really listen I to know. music. I, I, I heard this terrible conversation, uh, like for a few uh, teenage girls uh, mm -hmm. a while ago on the train, yeah. that they were proud when they were saying, we are so proud, ah, I never listened to a song until the end. No, no, and no. then the, one of the other girls says, I always listen to the song until the end. And yeah. they say, really? Like, nah, we never, like, it's cool. They, it, they said it in, like, in a way that, and I thought about it that you said about yeah. uh, the right time. And do you feel the world that it is changing today? Everything, nobody has patience for anything. Everything ah, is so quick. Do you feel it with the music or the fans, your fans are, are staying no, loyal and they're the same? It's amazing that the first track I put the made the video clip to is 13 minutes. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. telling, Ma, you're crazy, you yeah. know? You give it like 36 seconds on YouTube yeah. and then you see something else that's 
might be more interesting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it's amazing to me that we have we had 300,000 sales within a, f a few weeks now. And people are watching the whole thing, but they're not just watching it once, they're watching it 10 times. That's crazy. <laughs> and then people bitch, you know, on, on, on YouTube. When you look at other ones, it's like, you fuck you and this. Uh, you know, <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah, you can, it's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, this is crap and uh, well, you like this, yeah, but you see. But, you know, I read those comments and I was like ready to delete shit. <laughs> but they were like, oh positive you know and they were yeah. guessing about the story and what do you think happens in the story and i really like this singer and a guy writing out all the lyrics and a, a guy uh, putting which singer is singing where and it's such a warm and, and great audience you know it's amazing to to have and that. is there a, is there a message in in this album in the story or what is the message uh, to you basically I, I really try not to put a message in my story because mm -hmm. i really think that me as a musician it's not my task you know, I'm a musician and I want to offer escapism. It's it's what I wanted when I l was listening to music. Yeah. You know, I was listening to Jesus Christ Superstar. And for me, that didn't have a religious message. It was just a beautiful story, you know, about this yeah. guy sacrificing himself. Yeah. And... Um, so you kind of don't want to feed with a spoon? No, no, not at all. Yeah. I want to offer escapism. And I, I am not important enough. My opinion doesn't count. I have an opinion. Yeah. And it's... I have strong beliefs in things, you know, and they are so strong that I really would not say them out loud. Mm -hmm. you know, if you put a camera in, in my room when I'm watching TV, yeah. you'd be like, whoa, I wanted to ask you about <laughs> this is a weird guy. I saw that um, you said in the previous interviews that we, uh, you talked about this escapism and that you don't really watch TV no. or read the news because uh, you don't want to be inspired by that or you don't want this to affect no, you. It, it, it just, it, 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 it really annoys me and yeah. I can't do anything about it and I don't, as a musician, it's not, all I can do is offer escapism, yeah, really. Yeah. But having said that, you know, my personal views and my message will always be in there between the lines. You can't help that, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's about like what you said, you know, about the girls not listening to the whole song. Yeah. Or what I'm saying, like a few weeks ago, I was walking, I'm jogging every day on a country road and, and school was out and girls came, uh, or, or people, kids came towards me on their bike with their phone yeah. not seeing me yeah. not seeing, not seeing me yeah i'll be like hey oh sorry sorry you know yeah. and i'm like but i'm not judging it because i don't know if if they are happier than i uh, was when i was a child i, I can't tell yeah it's, it's it is hard to tell actually. it's hard because my tell. parents were telling me in my days you know we yeah you can't see it but there's like an old radio there yeah we were <laughs> 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 we were sitting Around the old radio, you know, uh, the whole family listening to uh, to a radio broadcast. Uh, you know, you were sitting for the TV, and that was way cooler, you know. And I would think, well, that sucks, you know, sitting around that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I really don't want to judge. And maybe they're as happy, or maybe even happier than me. I don't know. Well, we can never tell. You can never tell. But you are jogging. This is how you get inspiration. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm I'm listening to music when I'm jogging, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really thinking about music. What are you listening it's to usually, right now, let's say, now, uh, nowadays? Uh, when I jog, I listen to new stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's always new, new stuff. albums come. Yeah I, yeah, I read magazines, and if, if something is like album of the month, uh, I will check it out, whatever it is, just to keep updated. You know, I don't want to be an old fart who's stuck in the, in the 70s, because that's the music I love most. It's my formative years. So every evening I lie down and I listen to old shit, you know. I listen to Floyd and Sabbath and yeah. Purple and, and Beatles. and. Uh, but during the day I listen to, like like a few days ago, I, I listen to the new Avenged Sevenfold, for instance. So yeah. Or everything that's new that I think might interest me. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or Opeth with The Sorcerer. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go back to my... Uh, you know, my tragic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I listen to that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand musicians who say we don't listen to other music because we don't want to be influenced. You know, come on, influence yeah. me. I want to be influenced. You know, yeah. I want to be inspired. <laughs> but like, okay, you want to be uh, inspired, of course. And I wanted to ask something about when you make a new album and like uh, someone like you that has made many albums with really huge amount of music. It's not like albums with uh, two minute songs, three minute no. songs. Every, every song, it's like a classical piece. Um, do you have like the fear of repeating yourself or uh, like 
how do you avoid uh, going back to the same places or or are you afraid of this at all of repeating yeah, yourself yeah yeah you yeah yeah mm. i would yeah yeah i try not to i try to do things different every time and i have to say uh, that this album is really different uh, okay I cool i, I cool. really felt that cool. it it was really different and and, vers and versatile thank you Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I felt that you are like not afraid of um, bringing ma many many genres inside. I try in, to. Inside. I try to. Because yeah. I like so many genres of music, you know. Yeah. And there's, it's so such a shame when you limit yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Because there's so much. You you were talking about Tori Amos, you know. It would be such a shame. You no, know, I love metal. You know, I love ACDC yeah. and that. Yeah. I don't care about that. Give it a chance. But you the know? record companies aren't they try to limit you sometimes? When no, they, no, no, they don't. No. They give you. Uh, I'm my own boss. Complete freedom. I'm my own boss. Mm -hmm. I, I, I record everything myself. I decide everything myself. And when I'm ready, I license it out to, to record companies. So I, record companies are not... They work for me. Yeah. yeah. Are they watching this? No. Uh, I decide what happens. <laughs> but record companies would never do that. You know, it's a myth. Yeah. It's a myth. Maybe mm -hmm. if you're a boy band, you know. Okay, okay. Maybe then they, they start telling you what to do. But music like us, no, they I never had that. They you always give you a free reign. They give you freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw on YouTube this incredible production with the, the theater equation. Yeah. And I was like, really, I wish I could have been there myself yeah, yeah, yeah. to see this live. Yeah. And it's how much time does it take to put on something like that with all of those uh, singers? Two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah. And you were not on stage. No. Why? I totally hate it. And I you hate totally the stage? stage fright. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah? I, of course, I did it for 20 years. And the weird thing is when I got over my stage fright after 10 years, I didn't like it anymore. So I needed that tension to unwind. Do you feel I it's maybe a part stage. of the success? The success made you more uh, stage frightened? No, no, maybe? no. It, it started before, before I had success. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm not good. I'm not a performer. I, I am. I see myself as a writer, as a producer, because mm -hmm. that's what I do best. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a very competitive person. I want to be the best at yeah. what I do. It's awful. <laughs> that's why I work alone. I'm yeah. a total control freak, mm -hmm. egomaniac. To answer your earlier question, mm. and um, <laughs> you know, playing live means having to interact with a lot of people. Means having to travel and having to wait and not being creative. And and there's so many other people who, firstly, enjoy it more than I, I do. And Secondly, do it so much better than I do. Yeah. So it's it's really uh, now I'm really uh, a recluse. I want to be in my little bubble, you know, with my little doggy. And so you're like a, a more of a studio guy. Yeah. Like to stay in the 100%, studio. 100%. Yeah. I've uh, always been, but as a kid, of course, it was cool to play live, you yeah. know, to show off, to party. But that got old for me pretty pretty fast. And how is a day in your life looks like? Um, your routine. But my every day is the same, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Really, I get up at six and then I. Uh, I go to the computer, answer my first mails till eight o'clock, uh, have my meal. During meal, I watch always watch a comedy series, let's say The Big Bang Theory or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I go back back up, uh, do some more emails, uh, answer answer mails, uh, do some promotion. Then I go into the studio for a couple of hours. Then I go walk the doggy. Um, in the forest every day and then I uh, go jogging, shower, uh, go shopping, eat, watch a good TV series, go up again to my computer, do some more Facebooking, f some more fan mails, some more business mails. You're a lot in touch with your Till 11 o'clock, yeah. yeah. I, I, I saw that you said that you are really spending a lot of time yeah. uh, answering. Very important for me. Yeah, you know? why is that? Because without them I'd be nothing, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do it for them. Again, a lot of artists say, I do it for me, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do, I, if I would be alone in the world, I don't think I would make music or yeah. make albums. Yeah, you know? because you need the reaction. I need the reaction mm -hmm. and I need to know that I'm pleasing people. That's why you say, you know, I, you really inspired me. Yeah. And that feels, that's why I do it. Yeah. So for me, it's very important that, that people like, like what I do. So I, to try to please everyone is impossible. Of course. Of course. You can't do it. Any favorite classical composers? Uh, the usual, you know, the Beethovens and the Greeks and the... Yeah, I like, like... Uh, yeah, I like it too. I really like it too. That's my favorite part of all time. I'm fucking jealous of that one. And you jealous. know, when I, when I listened to your music, a lot of the time I felt a lot of uh, inspiration from uh, Jethro Tell. 
Uh, you yeah, heard that well. <laughs> yeah, uh, really. Yeah. And, and, uh, Top five material. Yeah, and and yeah. and you also collaborated with Keith Emerson, which is like yeah. a legend uh, musician. Absolutely. And Jordan yeah. Rudet. So you're really you're really reaching the top. Yes. What is next? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's always baby steps. I, I never think about the future. I don't think about the past, and I don't think about the future. I very much live in the now. So the now is. Uh, trying to promote this album because I'm really proud of it mm -hmm. and I think people will like it so I want to push it yeah and it's a new record company you know I want it to do well for them yeah. you know and uh, after that it's a live show so I want to make that you know people 9,000 people are coming from all over the world yeah. you know and they want to enjoy it so it's very important for me that they're going to like that so the until September, I'm going to be working on that to make it perfect. Yeah. Then there's going to be the DVD, of course. We're going to film it and So there is it. a lot of things going on. A lot well, of things going on. Yeah. Well, Arian, really thank you for joining us, uh, The Source. It's really a great You're very album. Welcome. Really buy cool. it. It's buy really it. buy it. Really, <laughs> it's really awesome. Yeah. I wish you much success with thank it. Thank you and very much. Lots of years of creation. Thank you. Uh, for your fans. Yeah. <laughs> I'll and do my best. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>